First of all, what I would do is basically create an empty project in IntelliJ or whatever you want to use. Okay, I'm going to use IntelliJ. I'm going to create a directory. So basically this directory, uh, let me actually have my snippets out there. So I'm going to create a directory called as project, right? So here you can see project. Now inside this project, I'm going to create one more directory called as flask where basically I'm going to write my all rest API. So name it as a lowercase. So project is flask. We want to create one more directory called as nginx. So name it as nginx. So that's our two directory. Now, um, what we need to do is basically inside the flask directory, we need to create our app.py. So I'm going to go to new. I'm going to say Python file, just going to say app. So this app is basically uh, our Flask application or actually, you know what I should have done is let me actually rename this to run.py because of certain reason. I'm going to tell you why. All right. So, so we have this project, we have the Flask, we have run.py. This is where I'm going to write my REST APIs. I'm going to be showing you all of that, the query parameters and all of that. Okay. After that, what we want to do is basically we want to create one more file and we want to call it test.py. This is basically the unit test file. So I've done that. After that, we want to create one more file called as requirements.txt. This file is basically uh, will tell Docker what all dependencies you want to install. So basically, I'm just going to copy that. So create a new, create a file requirements.txt file and on the same directory. After that, what you want to do is basically we have, we want to create a WSGI file. So I'm going to call one more file and call this as create a app.ini. This is a load balancing or think of this as a multiple routes. After this, we want to create a, uh, we want to create a Docker file. So I'm going to basically uh, copy that new click on file docker file so here you can see the entire uh, scaffold is ready now what you want to do is basically uh, you want to go to the nginx folder and this will also have a docker file so let's after that this file should also have an nginx.conf file basically which will do basically all sort of routing so just follow with follow with me and uh, do the bare bone structures that's ready now at the end of all of these directory that is a project directory we want to uh, make a docker compose.yaml file so we have that ready uh, and that's pretty much it that's our scaffold um, there you can see flask nginx wsgi and the compose file so let's build a pretty quick scaffold so let me teach you first of all the REST API. I said in the beginning of the video tutorial that mastering Flask REST API, right? So first of all, we're gonna learn. We, I assume you don't know it. So first of all, write your REST API. So what I would do is basically, usually first of all, we need to import certain modules. This is the way I do it. I usually put a try catch block. So I'm gonna say from Flask, um, I would say import, oops. I would say import Flask. We are going to follow the pepit spacing. After that, I'm going to say from flask restful import and we are going to say resource and basically we want to import API. After all, I'm just going to import some sys module, some OS module, except exception I see. So that's done. Very good. Um, now we need to define our app. So that's going to be just basically flask. You might be knowing that. So I'm just defining a very bare bone uh, rest API. Now I'm going to define my API. It's going to take the app component. After once done that, I'm going to define my first uh, route. So class API controller inherit from resource. I want to 
leave the constructor as blank i want to define a get method okay so make sure two spaces we are going to follow pep8 so that's done once we done that um, we want to of course add a route so api i'm going to say add resource and what are we going to do is basically we will say api controller and this should be on the home route and we're just going to say debug is equal to true so we get debug messages let us even try the running this mess uh, this this uh, on this uh, api and see if it is working as the way we expected so it started uh, on a local host so usually it's on the port 5000 copy the url endpoint check if you get the message hello world i think uh, it's because of my browser cache yeah i'm pretty sure Yeah, so the thing is it's not being hit, it's not hitting here. That's fine, no worries. So, so we basically we'll run this in a Docker file instead of basically uh, running it that way because sometimes with my computer there's a browser cache issue. So hopefully you have done um, this so far, right? That's how you would uh, basically uh, basically create a very simple API. Now I'm going to be teaching you how to run that on the Docker file. So in the requirements.txt, uh, we'll define all the re dependencies. So I'm going to do that. So let's go to the requirement.txt. These are my files that I need or all the libraries. Okay. Now basically we need to come to the Docker file and define the Docker file. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to do something. So I'm going to use an Alpine operating system right here. So I say from Alpine latest and basically first of all, what we need to do is basically we need to run, um, uh, we need to install Python three command and then we'll basically copy all the project directory into that folder. So copy the folder um, app, right? So one sec, I think, uh, yeah. So this is basically, this means like create a work directory on Alpine operating system. Now what we're gonna do is basically we are gonna copy all of our files on the Alpine operating system. So dot means current directory. Once done that, we basically install some GCC components which are essential. So I'm gonna do that. And at the end, we're just gonna run uh, the WSGI which is gonna run app.ini which I'm gonna define it pretty soon. So app.ini is basically the load balancing component of your file. So you first of all write this basically you have to tell this as WSGI. After that, you would say, which file do you want to run? That's the reason, that's where we're going to run the Flask file. So run.pry basically means we're going to run this file and this is going to start our Flask REST API. Callable is equal to app. So what should it call? So it's going to be calling the app module. Uh, ideally, I think it should be, uh, it's fine, no worries. So socket uh, basically means like uh, the nginx would be forwarding the forwarding the request to port 8080. We are gonna create true processes and threads. Master equal true, key mod equals to 660, vacuum true, die on term. So th threads should die. So I think that's pretty much done. Uh, so that's done as well. Uh, now the unit test code, um, we, we can come back and fill up the unit test code pretty soon. So let's leave it a blank. Um, what I need to do is now I need to define my nginx file. So I'm gonna download the nginx file. So here you can see I'm saying from nginx. Basically this means remove all the stuff that is there in the conf.t that is the current basically um, configuration and I'm gonna add my own configuration. And my own configuration is basically something like this. So all I'm saying is listen to port 80. Whenever someone comes, basically include WSGI parameters and call them, call it, call the folder Flask and forward it to port 8080, which is basically essentially what we did here, right? Port 8080. Okay, so this looks perfect. Uh, I'm gonna close this up, close this up. Run.py looks also perfect. Close this up, close this up, close this up, and and then 
and then let's at the last we're going to define our docker compose.yaml file this is basically where we will define our inf entire inf infrastructure so so basically we are saying build uh, all the docker file that is there in the folder called as flask container name i'm going to give flask restart always uh, expose port 8080 internally don't expose it to the outside world nginx we are exposing the port 80 to the outside world restart always as uh, we are saying container name is nginx build everything that is there in the folder that's pretty much my simple service file excuse me okay so once done that uh, make sure you have docker desktop install and let's try it out so i'm gonna say docker docker compose up tack tack build let's see what happens So now the fl the flask app is running. Now I can basically show it to you. Now if I go to the localhost slash foo, uh, you should see a message. Uh, Somil Shah works fine. Another thing that I wanted to add here is basically about environment variables. So if you want to add any secret file or API key or tokens, basically do not include that in the code. I would recommend to do this approach basically in your outer directory create a folder called as uh, .env file so here you can see i have like uh, sawmill and hello right now so what i'll do is basically if you want to use this uh, ideally you should uh, do that in the docker compose so say that env file and just say the name of the file if it's inside the flask folder that you would say sl flask slash uh, dev.env depending upon the directory of the structure very very important uh, but this is very very important because when you have multiple staging environment dev qa prod you don't want to keep changing your code or stuff like that so you just want to change your files that's the idea so okay that's done now let me teach you how to basically add query parameters here so uh, we all we have all this environment variables and stuff like that now let's say this the, the get request has to expire uh, except a name basically a query parameter how do i do that how, how, how to write the code for that i'm going to be teaching you right away so uh, what you want to do is basically we want to do a couple of imports and i'm gonna be showing you about that give me one sec so right here on the top uh, uh, include couple of imports uh, actually I'm just gonna say pass for now, man. Okay, so what I wanna do is basically I wanna include uh, two more uh, parameters here. So I've done that. Uh, what I wanna do is basically, uh, essentially, I wanna define query parameters, right? So what I have to do is basically I have to define some parser. So I'm gonna say parser is equal to, um, I'm gonna say request parser. Uh, actually, it should be rec parse rick parse and i'm gonna say dot add arguments what's happening to my intellisense today it's crazy actually you know what i can copy snippets man it's fine yeah for some reason i don't know why it was a little crazy okay so uh let's say i want to pass in a name i'm gonna say name and the help is basically if you don't provide that, um, it'll give you a message. Name is required. Okay, so I'm gonna pass that. I also wanna make sure that I pass one more query parameter. Uh, let's let's make this as um, is whether it's mandatory or not. So there is a field called as required here. So you can pass this. And I would say required equals to true. That means this field has to be given, otherwise it's gonna go crazy. Uh, let me do one more age. And this is not a mandatory one. Okay, so we have that. Now what we need to do is basically in this file, in the constructor, we need to define that, right? So in it pass, um, let me uh, again copy the snippets. I don't wanna make the video too long. I wanna keep it short and simple and sweet so people like it, right? So again, I'm gonna copy my snippets. So here, whatever name you gave here, so for example, name. Perfect, that's done. Uh, change this to name, that's done. Copy that. If you want, you can set it up to private or protected if you are gonna do inheritance. 
all this age okay so in order for me to prove this uh, that it works all right uh, so that looks good and now let's do a docker compose dot um, let's uh, let's build this docker compose of tag tag build so don't forget to save it uh, it might take a little while i'll edit this part all right so the docker compose build is done and it's up now let's try to hit the route so as soon as i say hit the route i did not pass the name so it's saying name is required now what happens if I say, so let's see. So here you can see we get the name uh, sawmill back and the age is null because I did not pass it. Let's, let's pass that 22 or whatever you want to pass. So that's how you can easily add query parameters. And here you can see it's doing load balancing. It's switching cores, threads, and all of that. It's the, one of the best architectures that you can do with the Flask REST API. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let's just do a small overview. You should have a folder called as my, uh, whatever the folder project. Create two folders called as Flask Nginx. Nginx is for routing, um, and um, Flask would be basically your REST API where you would write all your code. Um, make sure to have app.ini, which is a load balancing, Docker file requirements, run, and test file. Similarly, for Nginx, you would have Docker file and Nginx.con file. And if you have any environment variable, make sure to put it in the outer directory of your folder that is dev.env. And at the end, you should have one Docker compose. So you can just say Docker compose up or down, okay? So, that's a pretty uh, tutorial on Flask, right? I mean, uh, this is what you need for uh, making any REST APIs. You should be able to know how to do a GET request, POST request, and stuff like that. If you want to make this to POST, just change this to POST, and it will be done. So get, this is how you will re make REST APIs. It's that easy. Um, another thing is basically, you can also basically, uh, uh, so, up. Uh, so you can make, of course, get request, post request, whatever you want to do. You can add as many query parameters you want to do. Let's say you are making a microservice, so you can just say where, like, sensor name is, um, I don't know, like, uh, DHT. So it will give you the DHT sensor. If the uh, if the sensor value, if the type was, let's say, uh, temperature, so it will give you, like, the temperature data. So based on whatever the query parameter you pass, it's going to give you the sensor data. And it's pretty cool, right? So, yeah, that's how you would do it. Uh, this is a very small tutorial on... Um, how you should be doing Flask REST APIs in Python. Uh, this is the preferred way, uh, the industry standard way, I would say, creating containers, uh, creating environment files, and all of that, spin up everything in one uh, in one go. Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial series. Uh, the video might be a little long, but hope it might be a little informative. And uh, if you did enjoy this tutorial, uh, the entire code snippets would be there on my GitHub account. So kindly go check out in the description section and the links would be there. Once again, thank you for love and support. See you in the next video. Goodbye.